and good evening, Possibility War fans. We've got a live one tonight. Um, I've just remembered a couple of things that uh, uh, I, I did not put onto the attribution screen, such as the artists from uh, the Destiny map for Relics of Power Trilogy. Uh, this coming uh, week, I will be uh, adjusting those. I intend to adjust those anyway to reflect the artists and uh, any other contributors to the original adventure. Uh, for those of you who did work on the original adventure for the Destiny map, um, of which this adventure, uh, this one act that we are on right now is definitely a part of, I apologize with all of my heart for not getting uh, getting you recognized in here. Uh, I do intend to rectify that for next week. Um, this adventure is probably going to go on for at least two more weeks after this, so I should be able to get that down. Um, the other thing that might be fun about tonight is that Ginger, uh, bless her heart, has tweaked her back. Any of you who have ever had uh, pain in your back know how nasty it can be to get around, to sit up, uh, and everything like that. And she is uh, probably on a muscle relaxer and pain reliever of some sort. Uh, and and though she intends to play with us tonight, she may have to, to cut it short. And if we're not able to play with her, we will definitely miss her. But I would rather that she, she get to feeling better than sit up and, and, uh, and hurt herself potentially even more. Um, now, last week uh, we had our, our player heroes, uh, our, our Storm Knights, come out of the jungle and they were attacked by a were tiger. Um, I kind of went out all out on that one and they still managed to kick its butt pretty easily. Um, now there's some information from the Tharkold book that I did not read or, or, and was not made aware of until recently, which is also replete, repeated in the Pan Pacifica book about telekinesis. Apparently the authors uh, of Torg finally figured out that telekinesis is way too powerful. Uh, for alpha level characters so what they've done is they've rewritten the alpha level telekinesis and then added in a, a, a beta level telekinesis which is actually the original telekinesis um, and perhaps boosted just a little bit tonight we continue to play the one act adventure journey to the dark heart we uh, have been on scene one bargains and bounty hunters but we are uh, we are getting out of scene one tonight and then we will be moving on to scene two perilous trek okay uh, I, I want to kind of clear up something uh, from the last time that we were playing that I completely forgot about and I think I just forgot about it again um, it had something oh that's what it was um, Part of the description that I missed is that the bridge over the chasm that you guys crossed was kind of a splitting point between uh, between Arosh dominant and Core Earth dominant. Okay, there were no storms. Uh, it 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 was kind of a, a minor. A minor thing not collecting a whole bunch of possibility energy so there wasn't any storm that was going on however the the paquette fighter that was coming down the canyon trying to um, uh, blow Darius off the bridge uh, and cut the bridge down for that matter um, was right in between those two because realms uh, realities might cut the air in half but it's still air, so you can still fly through it. You could still, you know, you could still do all kinds of things. Um, so the the Paquette fighter, to kind of add effect to last week, was starting to turn kind of into wood on the Arosh side of things. Okay, uh, there were certain parts and pieces of it that were starting to fall apart. There were rivets that were popping out uh, and disappearing in the in in a rush. Basically, what happened was once the pilot uh, was uh, slain by uh, Katsumi's uh, rather large bullet, uh, 
the you know the aircraft lost reality cohesion from the Nile Empire. So it's cut in half between Core Earth and Arosh. And I, I, it's not that I forgot to describe it last week. I didn't know how to describe it last week I, or, or two weeks ago. I've been thinking on it, and, and that's, you know, that, that, you that, that's the best that I could come up with. Thank you very much, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> um, However, I think in the... Um, early days of aviation, there was the Spruce Goose. It was a jumbo jet made out of entirely of wood. Oh, definitely not uh, a jet. Yeah, it was uh, a uh, jumbo. Uh, uh, jumbo prop. Yeah. Yeah, jumbo prop. Thank you. It had what six engines or eight? I, I'm trying to remember. Anyway, I don't know. It was huge. It was and, huge. Uh, and uh, and it was. Uh, in the early parts of the aviation uh, yeah. days. Yeah, Howard Hughes. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. you know, if if the, the Spruce Goose was never going to fly again. So what they could have done was they could have split it in five parts, maybe six, close off the cockpit completely, split it in five parts, and then each part could have housed a family. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's how big it was. And and that's, you know, that's amazing stuff right there. Um I have not seen it yet because it's in the Smithsonian, but it is on my bucket list because I'm a huge aviation guy. I love aviation. So, um, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it now on Wikipedia, and apparently it had eight engines. Eight, okay. And it was built in 1947. Yes. Yes, when aviation was new. Um, That's still well after the uh, reality of a Rorsch, though. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, I was being revert to there, and then it's going to be reverted further. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so you know, uh, the wood eventually probably would have come apart. Uh, the whole thing might have turned into a wagon in the air, but mm-hmm. alas, the uh, the controls were, huh? I wouldn't be surprised uh, if it turned into a Zeppelin. Yeah. From Rorsch? Yeah, the Victorians had uh, uh, balloons and Zeppelins. On air balloons. Uh, yeah. 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 Hey, I hadn't thought of that. I had not thought yeah. of that at all. Good point. Uh, I was like, just uh, that flight, you know, fighter wasn't a reality, you know, reality rated opponent, was he? Uh, no, he was not. Yeah. So okay, he was, okay. he actually, wait a minute, he might have been. I know when the Paquette fighters uh, started chasing down the Catal- Catalina seaplane that you guys were in on your way to Christmas Island um, uh, and, and uh, Silicap Indonesia, I know that those pilots were possibility rated. So it may have been that he was possibility rated, but once you killed him, it didn't matter no more because the anymore because the link between the living and the dead was was severed. So yeah, I probably should have thought you no know, thought of that earlier. Or, you know, last uh, well two weeks ago, I guess. No, wow. Uh, but because there, I have the card last gas, which is I can you know play on a reality rated you know creature is defeat even by true death you know it makes one final attack with no wound penalties and and we're all flat footed but we all gain one xp wow okay yeah uh, should have thought of that earlier <laughs> but yeah about to ask that question so are did we pass into core earth reality yes over the bridge because if we're in Core Earth now, we have to discard our Orosh Cosm cards and draw Core Earth Cosm cards. No problem, because it's the end of Scene 1, and you're going into Scene 2. So, and yeah. we're, we're going to get to that here in just a few minutes. I'll, I'll share the advancement and uh, completion uh, information in a minute. But uh, what I want to do is, before uh, we get into advancement and completion, let's kind of go through what you all remember from uh from the last time that we played and i am going to start at the bottom of the list on 
uh, on Foundry, uh, Remington. What do you remember? I should say Tomislav. So we were able to, uh, I guess you could say, constrain the Wear Tiger until they turned back into, I think their name is Tajarti, is that correct? Correct. Our guide. Yeah. And after they uh, saying they had to leave and that kind of stuff, they went the opposite direction. We uh, went to the bridge, and while we were crossing it, there's a big old World War II style plane can flying towards us. And uh, uh, Katsumi, stealing Thomas Thunder, killed the pilot and the plane uh, crashed in a beautiful explosion. Yes. Went to the bottom of the canyon and, and uh, uh, had a, a great loss of integrity. Very much so. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> I mean, come on. It is a, a Nile uh, plane. Of course it explodes once it hits the ground. Yeah, that's true. As uh, it should. As, as for whether it was a larger aircraft or not, uh, it was, uh, I would have to find a picture, but it was more like the smaller World War II fighters. Uh, a, a, a British Spitfire, for instance, would have uh, been more likely. So, but uh, yeah, it, it wasn't all that big, but it was it was a really good shot. All of you made a bunch of shots, and and uh, and and oh, it, so it's a single prop, single prop. Plane? Yep. Uh, okay, I was thinking like a bot, you know, I you know, Peller, or whatever those things are called, those really big ones with two pro you know, propellers. Uh, just wings. just prop planes. They're just prop planes. But, um, okay, uh, so Tomislav, is that it? No, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave some for the, for the others to reveal, you know, <laughs> I don't want to take all the credit. Aha, uh -huh. aha, uh -huh. okay. Uh, Katsumi? Do you remember anything you could add? For you and Andon, Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, oh. Plane fall down. You go boom. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Ah, uh, uh, oh, yeah. Any, any other, any other memories? Uh, not particularly. Okay. Oh, I, I remember Chris being very heroic and getting us all across the chasm, and uh, except the himself. Bridge. Yeah, well, he got himself across, too, eventually, didn't he? Well, we're, we're going to cover that in a few minutes before we uh, close out the scene, okay? Okay. Because I, I, I've and, got uh, questions. Right. So, and then the last last thing we were going to do is take down the bridge so that people couldn't follow us and keep the bridge on our side, not their side. Well, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Let's let's make sure that we touch on everything from, from last week. Uh, so, Rios... You and and whatever you remember for Andon are up next. Um. Well, basically, we no longer have a guide. Uh, there was that whole debacle with the bridge. I do believe that most of us are already across, right? Most of you, I, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't remember who still hasn't crossed and who has already crossed. That would actually be Chris and uh, Toma. Uh, and, yeah, we're we're gonna address all of that here in just a minute. So, anything else you remember? Uh, uh, nope. Toma did some excellent shooting, though. He was the one that got the plane down, didn't? The, uh, mm, uh, that was Katsumi. Katsumi. That was, that was uh, Katsumi with the big old bullet. <laughs> Bravo, bravo. Um, I I should have said so last game, but that was impressive. Wow. Mm -hmm. That was indeed very good. I was just uh, impersonating Kirtanos. Yeah. That's all. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know if that's copyrighted or not, but I don't care. So <laughs> it, it's, it's still something that I have not seen. I don't know much about uh, whatever you're all talking about. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that for, for the younger crowd who really pays attention to the uh, anime stuff. 
Um, that's actually it's a it's a comic book called the a mini series of roughly six books called the Kim, Crimson Empire, mm-hmm. put out by Dark Horse Comics. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, I've not heard Seven of it. Problems. Nice, nice. Okay, Darius, what do you remember? Anything to add? I remember glory. That's true. That's oh, right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Roll of a 60, just crossing the bridge. That <laughs> was impressive. That's why I was thinking it was you who shot down the plane, but no. You were the one who just, like, made uh, the the glory just for crossing a bridge. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I took a step. The board crumbled. I fell through, but then I managed to grab myself and acrobatically fling myself back up onto the bridge. And it was so impressive that it gave possibility energy back to the people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it was a dramatic scene. It, it had been turned into a dramatic scene, so it was uh, valid. So it, I thought that was actually a pretty cool way to to uh, kind of give possibility energy back to the people in the zone. So that's pretty neat. Uh, anything else you remember? Uh, not that it hasn't already been touched on. Okay. Peaches? I haven't been shy about interjecting my comments into me. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. You you warned me that uh, that you might be interjecting a lot because of the the pain meds. So uh, yeah, it's 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 keep talking or crash. Oh. I should probably find one of those five hour energy things. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Chris, let's go ahead and finish up with you then. Okay. So. I crisscross did you know started up the crisscross crisscross <laughs> episode by using telekinesis to uh, carry people over back and well just across the uh, chasm Chasm. because it was you know twenty five meters across and as long as I rolled a you know rolled a good or higher I was like that was an easy you know. No, e- no, easily crossed uh, chasm with telekinesis because it was well within my range. Uh, there's the people who are still on this side of you know the bridge with you know with me and who hasn't been pu- you know pulled across by my telekinesis. It is me, uh, Toma, Kat- and Katsumi. Mm. Sumi was the one who landed the shot. Mm-hmm. Toma was getting ready to aim and use his like plane buster or whatever, it, whatever it's called. Uh, never got to actually use it because it, you know the plane crashed into the gorge before <laughs> he had a chance to even use it. Uh, oh. Yeah, uh, Darius uh, was the only one who actually walked across the bridge. Uh, at nearly falling off it, but was able to recover with his glory. Of uh, see, other than the uh, the, the the guy turning, you know, turning back from a were tiger ti- tiger after we successfully subdued him enough for the uh, clouds to cover up the moon yet again. The there's not much else to kind of talk about. That was the, those are the highlights, and yeah. Okay. Okay, for those of you in the audience, it is it has just been uh, I've just been made remade aware, if you will, that we're actually finishing scene two and beginning scene three, Temple of the Map, and we'll go there shortly. Justin, are you here? Nope, I'm over there. Okay, okay. Well, we want to move you from over there to over there. Um, are you still going to see if Chris will toss uh, Katsumi across the, the chasm, or do you also want to just walk? I'll walk. Okay, all right. Uh, that's that's actually going to be kind of a help to, to Chris. Um, we're going to take some narrative license here shortly. Um, so I need the two of you then to give me, uh, evidence analysis tests standard. 
Uh, this is to spot any weak points in the bridge. Now okay. you get you each of you gets a bonus of two because uh, because Darius already made it across and kind of showed you guys the weak points. What difficulty? Uh, ten. It's just a standard. Oh, I didn't add the plus two. Okay. All right. Uh, so both of you made that one. That's good. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay, I'm just going to have you do two rolls each because what was supposed to happen didn't happen but is going to happen in a minute. Uh, so... Uh, getting across the bridge, uh, I need each of you to give me an athletics test uh, versus a 12. No bonuses this time. Okie doke. Okay, I'm back. Oh, okay. wait, why am I stymied? Uh, yeah, it, I, I was trying to figure that out. Yeah, for those of you who were stymied, you shouldn't be anymore. Uh oh. Uh, okay, so you're one point off uh, for that test. Do you want to try and throw anything at it like a plus three card or uh, a, dra a drama or hero card? No, it's a Yeah, you're two points off. So, uh, Katsumi, and well, both of you, do you want to throw anything at that? You're only I mean, I've got an adrenaline card. Okay, Adrenaline gives you a plus three. Yes, sir. Do you want to go ahead and play that? I will go ahead and do so. Let me make sure I'm getting the right one to play. Okay. And then I'll add there the plus go. three. There you go. Beep. Yep. There, there we go. go. Okay, so then, uh, Katsumi, uh, you're one point off. What do you want to do? Okay. Rolling a possibility. Rolling a possibility. Okay, so that's a good success. Uh, you kind of follow in Darius' footsteps uh, almost exactly. Okay, uh, and you and Toma managed to make it across the uh, the uh, wood bridge uh, pretty easily. So then, uh, Chris, you have yes. you have just seen both uh, Toma and um, uh, Katsumi. Get across the bridge safely. Uh, now, in I know in our chat, it was said earlier. Uh, let me find it again. Okay, um, uh, that you wanted that you all had discussed untying the ropes from the bridge opposite of the temple side. So that's where you're standing right now, uh, and everybody else is on the other side of the chasm. Um, did you want to talk to folks? Uh, you know, kind of talk it over with everybody. And see what they yeah. think. It sounds like a good idea. I mean, yeah, I don't want them all over there where they can get a hold. The enemy can get a hold of. I want them on our side, so that we could restring them across if we need to. Because I can fly across, or just throw a rope. I mean, you can you can I, TK and a uh, rope across. But I but yeah, at that the point, it's going to take a lot, a very high DC. <laughs> or whatever I tried to do, like fine movement control of like tying a rope across. I well, could probably hold one up. Yeah. But, uh, you also wanted to talk to me about uh, telekinesis? Yes, I do. Um, okay. So in the Tharkold book, and again in the Pan Pacifica book, um, I found that uh, telekinesis was uh, rewritten. Uh, that the original telekinesis that they have in the core book uh, is, uh, is is a very high power version of what was probably meant for them to do. Okay, now I'm not going to take it away from you. Okay, I can't anyway. You're all you're a beta level character, so you can get that. Um, I just you know I do want to talk about uses uh, of telekinesis where it's more like overuse so if if you run a quarter of a mile you you might be winded a little bit you know everything like that if you're on a full mile you're you might be puking okay depending on what kind of shape you're in um, right. the overuse 
of any of your psionic powers is, is kind of going to be the same. So you you threw across Peaches first, followed by Rios and then Andon. Okay, Darius has gone over on his own, uh, followed by Toma and Katsumi. Okay, and all three of them made it over the bridge just fine. Uh, when uh, when you finished tossing Andon over, uh, and if I if I recall correctly, that was a really nice roll. Um, but once you got him over so that everybody could kind of take on the plane, uh, now that the excitement is done, uh, just as Toma and Katsumi are getting ready to cross the bridge, uh, you get a drip on your, uh, on your, uh, your universal translator, okay? And you look at it and find out that it's blood from your nose, okay? I'm not going to give you any penalties or anything like that. It's just an overuse of these telekinetic properties in cinematic terms uh, is is really taxing. So uh, it's like I'll be needing some rest if I keep at this pace. Exactly. Um, Has anybody seen that old movie called Scanners? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh, I've yeah. seen like one scene. I'm pretty sure it, the it, famous I'm, scene. it's the like head exploding scene. Yep. Yes. That's, yeah. that's, that's quite the famous overuse of, of TK right there. Yeah. Well, let's make sure that doesn't happen to you. Yeah. yeah. Just say it. I just I I'm the way that the the powers the psionic well any of the the abilities in the game are written they don't really take into account. That, that somebody could, in fact, I don't, I, I haven't read any of them that take into account, except for fatigue, for failure, uh, you know, the overuse of those abilities. So uh, let's just kind of, if, you know, let's just kind of agree that an overuse of those abilities can cause issues, but there's no hard and fast rules for them. Is that fair? I, I, if I do like, Let's say if I had moved the entire party across and then moved myself across or maybe something, even some heavy objects across as well, I would then be like having a stymied for the next while or I take a break or Or it it might actually. Yeah, you might get fatigue. Uh, You could get vulnerable and potentially very vulnerable depending on on the the use of the powers. Uh, You could have stymie or very stymie, which could be really bad for you because it affects your actual ability to use those powers. But uh, like the vulnerability is more or less just showing your your exhaustion from overuse of those abilities, that sort of thing. Um, it's, It's not... I wish it were written better into the rules as to how that sort of thing works, but they really didn't cover it. So uh, I, I think that we need to kind of make it a part of uh, our house rules uh, just to kind of keep things reasonable. Fair enough? Yeah, that is 100% fair. Like, if you. I've seen like some shows a just because you're a pyromancer doesn't make you immune to fire, right? But you can get like heat stroke if you overuse your you know, fire ability. You, this is the same like for telekinesis. I'm just being mentally exhausted because it's my mind strength. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I I also want you to go back and kind of look at all of your psychic abilities. There are changes coming down the pipe. Um, like with telekinesis, instead of uh, the the rewrite on telekinesis is instead of using your mind, it uses your spirit, which I'm still trying to figure out the logic of because psionics oh. has always been a mind thing to me, you know. Yeah, but uh, in case of like uh, telekinesis, it uh, well kinesis specifically mm-hmm. it is actually tied to spirit. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's, again, that's really strange to me. But uh, anyway, um, uh, any new players that come in and want to have psychic abilities, I'm going to have them kind of stick with the original rules, okay? Or not the original rules, the 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 updated rules. So I, I just wanted to let you know I have no plans to take away telekinesis or anything like that, but we do kind of need to put you know, put on the brake a little bit because right. they're pretty rough. 
Um, of course, you could, that could be said of any spell or ability that's out there. You know, I can fireball the crap out of you. So, uh, in fact, I just watched, uh, uh, we're finished, we finished up last night, uh, The Librarians, the last season of The Librarians, a, a show I dearly love and wish would have gone on. Um, and, uh, where, where is The Librarians streaming? Um, it's, uh, oh, uh, Hulu. I know I found it on Hulu. Oh, actually, on Hulu, it's leaving in, in, uh, four days. So it won't be on Hulu in four days. You you can't do three seasons in four days. Um, <laughs> well, you could I try. Can try. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know where else it's going from there. Um, it was a uh, it was an AMC show, I believe. So you might still be able to find it on AMC or on Roku or on Tubi. You know, uh, but uh, all, what I know is we we found. Uh, or we were watching the show, and it's the the second to last one where Jenkins is is tossed out of his body by a D and D gamer, and they have to to figure out how to how to get through everything without Jenkins' immortality and and everything like that. And uh, it it just he he says somewhere in the show that a fireball takes like several minutes or an hour or something like that to generate and then to to use it is you know the, he's going over D D rules about fireballs and it, it, it was pretty funny i enjoyed it um what, several hours for a fireball yes yes it takes six seconds to cast fireball well, thank I, you very much uh, okay okay according to the game rules yeah but jenkins uh, the, the guy who plays jenkins uh, Jenkins turns out to be like a 500 or 550 year old uh, immortal guy. He, he's been on Earth for 550 years, and he's seen all kinds of things like black dragons and and different you know different kinds of things uh, from when the world was actually mystical. Um, but anyway, uh, so <sighs> Toma Katsumi get across. So are you guys still going to untie the bridge from the opposite side of, of the chasm? Have uh, have Chris untie it and then fling himself across? Yep. Okay. So it doesn't take much really uh, to untie right. it. You can you can figure it. It's kind of like how how ladies braid their hair. Okay. The ropes are all braided in together and then they're knotted in in like 12 different knots on this one foot diameter post uh, and uh, don't forget i did string a safety rope before uh of my new rope before and, i went across to help people get across just in case the bridge was unstable so that uh now so that's staying no that should be no. untied as well okay that's just like mentioning we remember this and we're going to be taking care of it as as we go. Okay. Yeah. Now, believe it or not, it takes you roughly an hour to untie these things. At 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 which time, or during which time, uh, your friends are kind of recovering themselves and everything like that. Uh, so I'm also kind of resting my head, just focusing on untying the knots. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's fine. So all of you can remove your stymied conditions. Um. And and we'll go from there. If you don't remember how to remove your stymie condition, talk to me. I already did it. Okay. All right. Good deal. Okay. So uh, we come to a close on scene two, not scene one. Do scene two. Do you recover any shock? Yes. You recover all. You can recover all of your shock because it's one shock per minute uh, out of action or combat uh, uh, scenes. Okay. So let's see. How come this is not taking off my stymied? I deselected it on my character. Uh, your stymie uh, is gone. Okay. I, I'm not showing your stymie there at all. You may have to refresh. Okay. What about the shock? It shouldn't the shock have gone? No, the How shock does. The... the shock does not come off automatically. Okay. Okay. You actually have to reduce that in the left bubble to zero. Okay. The, all right. The right bubble is your max shock, of course. So we've uh, recovered? Yes. I'm going to say you've been able to rest for about an hour from the fighter, from the the uh, um, 
Oh, yes, from Tajardi. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Toma. Yeah, I was about to get to that. So I saw this really weird sight going over the bridge. It looked like uh, Tajardi jumped off uh, down into the ravine, and uh, I heard a splat, not going to lie, uh, but I have no idea if he's actually dead. Is that odd to say? You think he might have leaped to his death? Well, I saw a orange and white paw that uh, disappeared, so he could be alive, but I don't know if it's him or just the beast that's what's in, you know. Oh, no. Second thing, Chris, would you like to be carried? And if so, bridal style or piggyback? Uh, wait, what? Carry you so you can rest. I saw the nosebleed. I can carry you if you want. Uh, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, yeah, I'm, oh. right, I'm on the other side of the bridge and tying knots. Yeah, <laughs> he's so you like. I'm hey, shouting it over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, when you get over, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, sure. I, I can't just say no. I mean, <laughs> think. So somebody from Core Earth, like uh, oh, say Chris, could could uh, holler the song. Chris Cross will make you jump, jump as he. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming oh. over. I know it was terrible. I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry. I'm not, <laughs> not, you know what I'm talking about? Red Rover, Red Rover, send Chris Cross right over. There you go. Um, what is this Red Rover thing? I've never heard of it. <laughs> a children's game. That's a children's sing song. Well, actually, for what do we play? Hide from the demons. It yeah, wasn't very fun. I was gonna say you you don't really have children's games in in Tharkold. <laughs> yeah, so, we would uh, hide from techno demons and the like. That was our games, and uh, sometimes it's a bit lethal. Mm -hmm. I'll just say that. That is the truth. Um, okay, so Chris, uh, go ahead and roll to get yourself over. Okay. Red Rover, Red Rover, send Chris on over. Why don't you tie the safety rope to your waist, just in case, before you go over, Chris? Please. Uh, it's not a bad I mean, idea. I won't even get off the ground unless. Yeah. I... Yeah. Well, oh, that's really it, nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tie yourself to the rope. If you should falter, we can, we can pull you over. Yeah. That that's yeah, a very I, nice roll, though. Yeah. Very nice roll, and I mean, I go. I'm. That yeah. Just for you know, Peter's sanity. I yes. Will tie around my waist. Yeah, you're able to do that pretty easily. Across with me. Yeah. Yeah. I I do have to say though, even with that thing tied across your waist, um, the the telekinesis probably goes so quickly that uh, that if you you managed to fail somehow, uh, you'd probably just smack into the into the wall anyway, um, and it, it would be some pretty significant falling damage. Oh, uh, again, I wouldn't have gone off the ground <laughs> without telekinesis. I would just would have fallen, you know, face first, and I did bad, you know, poorly enough. Okay, to now get onto the ground with like a nosebleed. You do manage to to come back to your feet on the opposite side of the chasm, um, but you noticed a swelling headache on your way over. So your nose is your nose bled a couple of drops, and you've got this swelling headache. And after you realize you've got this swelling headache, you realize that you're pretty tired. Okay. Yeah, I think I really do need to take you up on that piggyback ride. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, would you prefer a piggyback ride or a bridal carry? Which is more comfortable for you? I just said pig, piggyback, piggyback ride. <laughs> what, you don't okay. want to be bridal right. carried? Oh, come on. Um, I mean, in the case I of an emergency, I, I mean, he I can, can't I can swaddle you. I'm in his arms. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got, I have got feet. I can kick and I can headbutt. Uh, <laughs> okay. I am a weapon. All right. Did everybody have advancement and completion pop up? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead and click on completion, uh, and it goes to ending a scene right there. Now, uh, um, uh, Gordon uh, said this a little bit earlier, and I'm grateful that he did. Uh, if you have a Cosm card from Ororsh, 
you must discard it. In fact, if you have any cards in your hand, uh, and you should have no cards in your pool right now, but if you have any cards in your hand uh, that are from or uh, that are specific to O'Rourke, no, that's not saying it right. You could have a card that could be played in O'Rourke, but it's still a, a standard Destiny card. Um, anyway, so. So we draw the Core Earth Cosm Guard deck instead, right? Yes. Uh, everybody go ahead and draw a Cosm card from the. Uh, let me make sure the core cards Earth. are where they're supposed to be from the Core Earth deck. Whoa, why are why is everybody still discarding cards? Oh, no, that's it's draws and discards. Okay, so that's... Yeah. Oh. Now, I need to change that from Drama Arosh to Drama Deck, which is the basic. Uh, let's see. Destiny Deck, Destiny Discard. Okay, 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 okay. All right, got it. Save changes so that if when we go into combat, it will be in Core Earth. You are now in a Core Earth dominant area. Uh, there Ooh. are no core. There may be core Earth pure areas, but not bloody likely because of the nature of core Earth. Um, so uh, all players move their pool cards back into their hands if any are in the pool. Uh, anyone with more than four cards in their hand, unless they have a perk that allows them to keep more, which in this case is a glory, must choose which cards to discard to get down to four. A glory card allows for an extra card in the act following, which you're in this act and in the beginning of the next next act. Um, that means we get five instead of four, correct? Correct. You get five. So go ahead and draw destiny cards up to five. We need to uh, discard our... Uh... Destiny cards? Nope, or? just uh, just the Cosm cards. You're only supposed to... Every, right. Yeah, everybody's supposed to pick out their Cosm card. Okay. And, oh, yeah, and if they're below five. They and if that. you're below five, you go back up to five. Um, okay. Let's see. There we go. Okay, now, finally, if a player has one card they do not like they're welcome to discard that one card and draw a new one and 4a if you have a card which allows you to trade for a new card in exchange for something else but you don't like the card play it to conform to normal card play rules and that's a house rule for me so if you have a card you don't like go ahead and discard it and draw a new one um, and uh, and if you have any trades to do, you can do some trades if you like. Um, no, but I do want to make the uh, uh, game master aware that I have an idea plan, uh, uh, idea card in my hand. Okay. Um, just, just if that's needed, feel free to snatch it or tell me to play it. Well, uh, I will not remember it, so it's going to have to be up to you to remember. <laughs> and if anyone else remembers, that's good too. Um, now, uh, the, you, it's not the end of an act, so you don't get any possibilities. Uh, you should have recovered all of your shock, uh, and all uh, conditions should have been removed from your characters by now. Okay. Um, any questions before we get to scene three? Oh, uh, I have a question for all of you. If any of you have a card that says "Play now" or "Play on the card" or "Play on the table immediately" or anything like that, uh, let me know. Excellent. Okay, so you can char you can close the advancement and completion window. Okay, I may have to be careful on how I read. Uh, what's going on? This may be a short scene. I'm not for certain about that. Okay. When has it ever been a short scene with us? Famous last <laughs> word. Hey, okay, you have a distinct point there. A very distinct point. Okay. All right. Having followed Andrew's step-by-step instructions thus wait, far. Wait, wait, wait. What, what, Let what? me say it. The game is paused. 
<laughs> Not like you can go anywhere now, but okay. Oh, beatings, but good catch. Um, <laughs> uh, clearing the jungle away with machetes in sheer force, if you will, and making it across the chasm, you realize reality around you has changed. No longer is the heat more oppressive than it would be in the, in the jungle, but you actually feel cleaner as though you've had a refreshing shower before stepping back out into the unrelenting heat. Um, you find yourself in a clearing similar to the one on the other side of the bridge without the extra bugs trying to eat you, a grassy ramp leading up between the chasm to your right and a tall escarpment to your left. Uh, the grass looks as though it is more than, uh, it is more than natural as though perhaps it has been tended, uh, though you see no one around to perform the tending, so it's short grass, basically. Rewarding your perseverance is the visage of the temple above, and you're seeing more of the top portions of it than anything else. Climbing the slight ramp, it takes moments before you are standing in front of the entrance, a menacing throwback to days when stone carvings were designed uh, to both entertain and frighten. Let me preload this. Uh, uh, preload and frighten. Where did I put that? <laughs> uh, there it is. Built into the front of the hill, you find yourself in front of one of India's most ancient temples. Uh, activate. Okay, it might take a moment for all of you to load in. All right. The entrance itself is a large, dark opening adorned with mystic writing and carved guardians. First off, uh, are all of you able to see the green areas uh, and the bushes? I, I see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure this lighting thing gets tricky every time they change mm -hmm. a version. Okay, let me try this again. The entrance itself is a large dark opening adorned with mystic writing and carved guardians. To the left and right of the door, you find murder holes similar to those of ancient castles. The guardians are monkeys, each with multiple arms, smiling and seeming to reach out towards you in a fashion that makes you uncomfortable. Okay, you see this in front of you, but in color. Okay. Uh, and without the words, obviously. I um, think it's um, being right. like cut in yeah. half by the light. Oh, it sure is. Do you see that, everybody? Yeah. Okay, I know it's kind of on its side, but there are reasons that I've got things blocked off. Um, I wasn't sure that it would actually, you know, cut things off. I see gears and what appears to be round pegs on the... Is that a hinge? What is uh, that? Oh, sure. I got to get back up here. Uh, is what a hinge? No, this is uh, a door that kind of slides across on on some rocks, and that right there is a hole. Now you don't actually see these gears down here. You actually you see a portion of this third one here, uh, but you do see the large gear. There's kind of a stone window. Uh, the the door that you see here. Uh, back over to the right layer here okay you can see that door you see the upper portions of each of these rollers okay as you're going across and you see uh, kind of the like I said there's a, a broken piece uh, uh, below the the hard portion now uh, well crap that doesn't help either okay so this line, I should have drawn this better, I apologize. This line right here, the, the horizontal line that you see, kind of goes all the way down to the ground, okay, and is part of the front of the temple, but there is a broken part in here that exposes a part of this gear, okay? 